So we have a swap out. Our friend Kevin Bullock is not here today, but we have a guest Kevin, also known as Matt Gibb. Do you want to use my mic while you're playing? Would that help? You got it? Hello? Nope. Hello? There you go. Super. All right. Thank you very much, Heather. Um, like Heather said, um, if you came here uh, and you know Kevin Bullock, you probably figured out by now that I am not Kevin Bullock. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't make it, but I'm going to uh, do my best to, to fill his shoes. Um, so my name is, is Matthew Gibb. Uh, I work at Maxar, uh, and I'm based out of Washington, D.C., uh, in the U.S. So before we dive uh, too far into things, I, I sort of want to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, I am not a statistician, uh, nor am I like an M&E specialist, but I have spoken to quite a few people here over the past several days uh, between the hot summit uh, and the events uh, here at State of the Map. Uh, and you know, some people I've known for years, some people I'm just meeting for the first time. Um, so I think I've got a, a pretty good sample size. And there, there's one question uh, that has been at the forefront of, of most people's minds. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's, that's why you're here today. Like, hey, somebody from Maxar is here, and I really want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, and that question is, did we plan this? Um, so this is down, downtown. Uh, you, you're allowed to laugh, it's okay. Um, if you don't, my kids don't either, so it's fine. Um, it's just a bar in the old city. Um, Max bar, I thought it was funny. Um, but, but really, the, the, big, the big question everybody's sort of asking, and I've probably answered a dozen times uh, the past several days, is, is what happened to Maxar and where did Digital Globe go? Um, so that's technically two questions, but uh, let's, let's talk about it. I, I don't want to go as far back in, with my story as uh, Dr. Zip did yesterday with the history of the university. Um, but I will start in some, some simpler days, uh, before the GDPR, uh, before Avengers Infinity War, um, before the Tide Pod Challenge, uh, and before the last season of Game of Thrones. Um, way, way back in 2017, um, MDA Holdings and Digital Globe merged to create a new company, Maxar. Um, and that, that created these four separate businesses uh, operating uh, all under the Maxar name, uh, but retaining their legacy. So there is uh, SSL, Digital Globe, Radiant Solutions, uh, and MDA. Um, so for a little over, the, over, over a year, uh, these four companies operated as separate business units, um, keeping their names and areas of expertise, but ultimately it was determined that we could work better together, uh, and, and it made sense to become one Maxar. Um, but one thing hasn't changed. Uh, we, we still want to be able to provide insights uh, about our changing planet, uh, where and when it matters, uh, and, and OpenStreetMap certainly matters. So to get into things, uh, the, there have been some changes, and of course change means saying goodbye to some things. Um, so if you haven't noticed already, uh, as of July 1st, the Digital Globe Premium and Standard Imagery Services are now gone. Um, but uh, that means the Maxar Premium uh, and Standard imagery, imagery Services are here, and I'll, I'll talk to you about some of the, the changes uh, and benefits of that uh, next. Um, whoops. Uh, and another farewell is uh, for the Mapbox aerial imagery that had previously been incorporated uh, into the DG Premium service. Um, that was mainly in major cities where there was aerial imagery available. If, if you reached a high enough zoom level, you'd notice a, a transition to uh, aerial imagery. Uh, that is no longer in the, the Maxar Premium uh, service. So some of the, the new updates uh, to the Maxar imagery services. Um, it's going to be exclusively satellite imagery uh, with a spatial resolution between 30 and 50 centimeters. Uh, the previous DG services ranged anywhere from 30 to 60. Um, and there is some shift, um, as, as everybody, I'm sure, experiences, um, and that's to be expected. Usually it's around two to three meters. Um, if you're 
uh, using you know ID or Jossum. Um, you can use the imagery offsets. Uh, Jossum has a, a great plugin for uh, the imagery offset database. Uh, where you can actually share offsets uh, with other mappers. Um, so so that way everyone is is working with a similar offset. Um, and we're also planning on pushing updates more frequently. Um, in some places that, that can be up to uh, two or three times a year. So uh, there, there's also uh, a, a good amount of, of work left to do uh, for these services. Um, first is, is around updates. Uh, if, if there's a particular area um, that hasn't been updated um, or the quality isn't great, uh, please reach out uh, and, and uh, we, can, we can try and, and figure out what's going on. Um, I'll provide some contact information at the end uh, to reach out to Kevin. Um, he, he'll be the best person to, to help you with that. Um, and uh, another question I've been asked uh, quite a bit is, well, when is the imagery from, right? That's, that's very important. Um, so you may recall that with the DG services, uh, there, there was a vintage layer that was available um, in, a, in addition to the actual uh, image, image layer. Um, so that's not yet available for the Maxar imagery, but it is coming. Um, we're, we're working on restoring that. Um, we, we, we recognize the importance of knowing when you're looking at, right? Um, and it, that, that could end up, not, not knowing that information could end up turning a mapper away because they don't know the date uh, that which they're, they're mapping uh, or if it might not be recent enough. Um, so that, that vintage service, it, it's a couple months away, um, but we have the data. We want to make it happen. We're just figuring out the, the best way to do so. Um, so that, that's um, largely the updates on the imagery services. Um, but uh, the other part of this talk was uh, around uh, another uh, sort of proof of concept that we've been playing with. Um, it, it hasn't been implemented anywhere, but I uh, just wanted to sort of share uh, some of the details uh, with you. Uh, so, like I mentioned earlier, we're working on getting the, the vintage layer for the Maxar imagery service. Uh, available to the community. Um, and while that, um, while that vintage layer may ultimately be available, um, ultimately mappers are, are, are going to be limited uh, to what's available in the preset base maps. Um, we've been investigating the use of uh, WMS and, and, and web feature services to automatically add feature tags as part of uh, an image category with values based on the image metadata. Uh, things like imagery date, sensor, um, or the mosaic that it's from. Uh, so the benefit of this uh, being additional attribution and context for a feature. Uh, informing users not only when the feature was created, but also the source of, from which the, uh, source of the imagery from which it was mapped. Uh, so we began looking into this uh, with the landfall of Hurricane Harvey back in 2017 in, in Houston, Texas. Um, what we did in um, our own forked version of, of ID, we added uh, three WMS and, and WFS pairs uh, to, a, to this version of ID to the uh, data slash imagery JSON uh, that's, that's available uh, in ID. And with two sources of pre-event imagery and, and one source of post-event imagery, um, you know, we, we wanted to be able to compare, um, you know, mapping a feature uh, before, the, um, before the event and then uh, being able to use that metadata uh, after the event. Uh, so what basically happens uh, is when ID is initialized, the WFS is loaded locally into memory. Uh, the WFS can also be uh, queried on each zoom or pan uh, as well. Uh, when that overlay is uh, selected, the WFS metadata features uh, are, are loaded, again, uh, being the date, the sensor, and the mosaic. Uh, and when that feature is created, the metadata is retrieved from the WFS and uh, added as tags to the feature. Here's just an example, uh, again, over Houston, showing the WMS of the event-related imagery um, lo being loaded into memory, indicating uh, that the, the console, uh, that the feature services are present and that they were loaded um, sort of as part of the proof of concept. So you can see, you can see the, um, the WFS grid there. Uh, 
And, and here's your typical uh, example of feature creation in ID. Uh, we, we drop the point and add the feature tag. Uh, in this case, mini golf. Um, not, not sure about you, but the, the dog leg on 17 looks, looks pretty rough. Um, it's a golf joke. <laughs> um, and, and here's the example showing the WMS uh, of the event related imagery uh, from, from the WFS. Um, so when the, 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 f the feature is added, the WFS allows the source tags to be transferred onto the feature, um, allowing for users to identify the date of which a feature is mapped. Let it go through again so you, you can see. So there's the, uh, the imagery metadata. Um, so, so how does this impact uh, OpenStreetMap though? Uh, we're able to look at a single image and get the source metadata added to the features. Uh, but how do we allow for the imagery mosaics uh, to allow for this metadata to be passed at a, at a global scale? Um, we we, we want to be able to accommodate mosaic imagery references. Almost all OSM users are mapping with uh, an imagery mosaic, so we, we really need to scale it up. Um, of course, uh, geometry matters, the azimuth angle of the sensor uh, of the and the platform all play a role in the resulting uh, satellite image. Uh, but it would ultimately allow uh, the end user to discern additional information uh, about the features. Uh, and uh, there, there would obviously need to be discussion around attribution needs as well as the standardization of the source tags. Um, it's not something you just implement and make um, everybody have the, the metadata tags. There would obviously need to be discussion around it um, and to, to work with it, the practice within OSM. Um, this is, there was really just a proof of concept that uh, we thought would be cool to, cool to share. Um, so what, oops. Uh, what, what's the, the time of the image you, you use uh, is another question. You know, are you using the local time of where the image was captured? Um, or are you using UTC time, which might be more useful to a, a more global community? Um, if, you're, if you're looking at things at a, and want to know a specific time, um, it, it's a question you need to an answer. And so there, there's, you know, other questions and, and, and details to be straightened out. Um, but there's definitely a benefit to be had for adding additional uh, metadata at a feature, at a feature level. Um, so thank you uh, very much for your time. I, I am open to some questions about the presentation. Uh, I, am, I am not necessarily an expert on the imagery topic, um, but I'm happy to chat with you or take down your question uh, so that we can get an answer for you um, after the conference. Um, I have Kevin's OSM username here. Um, he's a great resource to reach out to uh, if you have any uh, specific questions on, on this work. Thanks. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Matt? Right there. Thomas, I'm just going to move by you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Someone's got to break the ice and make me run, but I'm missing my second cup of coffee. It's not going to be pretty. Thanks for your talk and for providing the imagery. And I think the metadata are extremely important. And uh, what is the support for, for other editors or is there a generic format you provide the metadata? I'm sorry, can you repeat it? The, the support for other editors, so is there a generic format you provide the metadata? Uh, is there a generic format for re retrieving the metadata? Um, I'm not entirely sure. It, it, ultimately, it would depend on the, the WFS um, that we created. So for this, it was um, just this one test case uh, over Houston, and it was, you, know, you, you saw the, the, the grid that was created. Um, so it, it would depend on the, the imagery service itself if we were to scale it up looking at an entire mosaic. Um, there, it would be important for there to be, um, you know, a standard set of tags and, and metadata. And, that, and that's uh, why I mentioned, you know, having the discussion with the community before even thinking about uh, making this something that's available everywhere. Super. We have another question, but I'm looking for Saeed, 
and Sabata, who have who are going to be giving it night talks. Are you here? No, they're going to lose their spots. Christoph. Yeah, I first wanted to emphasize on what the previous question was about. I would suggest to you to reach out to the developers of other editors and ID about how to best uh, mm -hmm. make a concept and uh, what their requirements would be. That would be great to involve all because many of the people who would profit from these features are using other editors. Mm -hmm. My question was, um, you're also recording stereo images from multiple directions. And if there are any plans to make three-dimensional data derived from stereo imaging to the OSM community for mapping? So j just to make sure I'm hearing you right, is there any intention to add uh, more stereo uh, imagery uh, available in OSM? But the stereo imagery itself is not of that much interest. Can you, can you take the microphone? Is it, the echo is strange. Can, can you repeat the question now without the microphone? I, I, the echo from the, I, I couldn't hear you. can't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, then I repeat the question without the microphone. Uh, do we record stereo images uh, with your satellites? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder if uh, there are any plans to make three dimensional data derived from the stereo images to the OSM community for mapping purposes or okay. uh, mapping three dimensional uh, features and stuff. Oh, okay. Can you Thank repeat you. the question, Matt? Yeah. Um, so the, the question was uh, is there any intention to uh, release the Uh, features could be mapped within OSM. I don't know the answer to that question, but I'll write it down and, and I'll, uh, I'll get that to Kevin. Thank you. How to reach Christoph? I'm sorry? <laughs> sorry. Who doesn't have his email address? <laughs> Seriously. Warmly, Christoph. The most engaged. We sh have we ever done the math on the mailing list as to the percentage of emails? Um, all right, so I'm still looking for Saeed, Sabrata, Sabrata, and Ilya. For night, night talks. Nope. All right. And questions. Next questions for our friend. Heather. Oh, sorry. She did say two cups of coffee. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So in in the slide you said that there will be places that is that are gonna be updated twice a year. Mm -hmm. How about, let's say, a general minimum, like there will, no, there will be imagery older than one year, two years, or um, what's the plan? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure um, about the, uh, if, if anyone didn't hear, the question was, it, some places may be updated uh, two times a year, um, but what's, what's the minimum? Is it going to be, you know, once a year or, or two years? Um, or, or more, um, I, I, don't, I don't know the exact number, but um, I'll, I'll pass that to Kevin. Um, I'll, I'll make sure Kevin uh, collects these, uh, sorry, these questions and shares them out uh, broadly, um, because uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have similar questions. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Based on um, building off that question, is there any intention to let people know when and where layers will be updated, or is it just going to be that magical black box when the um, imagery pops up? So I, I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, the so when and when and where uh, imagery will be updated. Um, I, I do know we will have the vintage layer um, about when when the image was updated, uh, but in terms of uh, you know what's what's in the pipeline. Uh, I don't know. Part of that depends on the available imagery. Um, sometimes there there's not as much imagery over an area, um, but I'll I'll ask Kevin as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Matt? Once, twice. Matt, are you going to be here the rest of the day? I will be here the rest of the day. I'll be here all day tomorrow. Um, if all right. Like. So two more days to drill him with questions in person. And he can write them down if he doesn't know it. Right. So thank you, Matt. Thank you. Is that really loud? Probably.